folks, welcome back. We are like T minus 10 days till Double Masters ruins the world of magic, the Yugle Yoing. And we all wish we could still jump in the air like this crazy looking chick. Although I, her skin, I think she might need a doctor. That, that looks like me. That looks like me on the weekends. Folks, I hope you're having a beautiful day. Beautiful day. Not a good day, beautiful day. My name is Timmy. You're watching the Emporium of Tetherballs and um, videos for the patron, William H. William, I don't know why you signed up for a Commander Ledger's box opening. You might as well just write off the whole payment. I'll be happy if you make $3. Folks, sit back, relax. Let's talk about what's going on. Um, we're doing draft boxes today. I know, I know, I know. I know, you're clicked off, you're already gone, so every, the viewership's down to 1% already. But the question remains, what will people look back on this product? Oh, I forgot how many cards are in these packs in the draft. What are people going to think? Pack one. Silver Dragon! And beautiful looking Flow of Earth. That's a pretty impressive pack one. Question remains, folks. 12, 24 months from now. Double Masters is old news. Everybody moves on. What is the attitude and pricing going to be on this product? That's really what it's going to come down to. Beautiful, beautiful foil common. And as of right now, every single store in the country is fire selling, dumping every single box off the books to raise capital to run triple rare. Apparently, they're all worth zero. And people are just trying to raise every penny to survive this inflationary bear market, mild recession, whatever you want to call it, and to pay bills and distributors and to survive. So we're seeing extraordinarily, extraordinary, extraordinary, just fire sale, emotionally driven price swings. El Minster coming in, mythic number two. And uh, Earthquake Dragon, very nice. And uh, hey, the Hag, that's what I look like. And, um, you know, it's kind of funny. I've been watching the draft and set boxes, and now the volume is starting to slow down and stabilize, but really no real price movement. Full rare, other brain. No real... I, I thought I thought we could see a short-term dip as everybody dumps the product off their books, and I haven't seen that. I'm really surprised by it. We got a gnome, Avarice, a eh, little uncommon monk. And, you know, so some distributors have a theory, and they believe that Post Double Masters, the market's going to reevaluate this product. Once Double Masters flushes through in like 30 days and that's it, you know, there's a lot of theories that people are going to return to Double Masters and, or Double Masters to Commander Legends and reevaluate it, this and that, and everything like that. I don't know if I fully agree. I don't know if I'm fully on board with that. Um, these box opening videos, if, if anything I've learned, are some of the more volatile, wow, wow, a puzzle box, regular, that's actually, I don't even know if we've ever pulled that regular mythic. It's, and that reinforces another point, how difficult it is to get any particular card in this set. I still think expected value is actually going to rise over time in some of these cards, huh, the infamous Boulder's Gate card itself, and the Foil Gate. I think a lot of these things are just not understood. And I don't think the market, in the, and I, I don't think 90% of people who just take a glance at everything have actually put time into researching all the cards, you know, what they do, interactions, synergies, how they hold up. I don't, I just don't think people are doing that. I don't think they are. Everybody's obsessed with Double Masters, and they probably should be, Blade, because Double Masters is quite, frankly, you don't even have to know what Magic the Gathering is. But, you know, Double Masters, when you open some collector crazy packs... Yeah, well, you're probably going to get some crazy gorgeous cards. Boom! Battle Angels. There we go. Foil Mythic. Wow. Really? Halfway through the box. Four Mythics. Actually, William, this is uh, turning out to be not a bad box opening. And so this is, I have, this is the least, I haven't done a lot of the draft box openings. Um, we're, we're over halfway through the collector box. Over halfway through the, the set boxes. Like, the, there's ten videos of each um, set, draft, and collector. So we're around video number like 15 already. Out of 30. So we're like halfway through this Commander Legends Boulder's Gate experience. At least on the Alpha Investments world. And the thing that stands out to me is... I kind of enjoy opening the set and draft boxes a lot more than I like the collector boxes. Because I feel like there's less volatility. But the collector boxes... Man, when you get a good collector box, you get a good collector box. You hit it, you hit it big. But, unfortunately, most people who open them, you're not. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to get lucky. And you're going to get punched in the face, and Chuck Norris is going to say, well, 
I was just coming over to visit your wife, and we were just going to watch Netflix and play Monopoly. And you know Chuck Norris doesn't do that. It's Chuck Norris. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, you just you can look at him, and you know what's going on. But these draft and set boxes have been a little, little different. Here we go. Oh, Matrix ship. Full Monty coming in. Another Mythic number five there. You know, it's been a little bit different. Again, for $90 booster boxes, you know, um... Look at this. I just, want to, I just want to finish this first box. I want to kind of show a point here. Only three packs left. But for $90 boxes, like this, golly, five, we got five Mythics in this video, or this box, the first one in this video. And, you know, so far we have not hit any of the foil rare. We have not hit any of the good rares. And that's the problem. You need to hit, essentially in a draft or set box, you need to hit at least one of the good pools. And when I say one of the good pools, Adventure, you need to have an Archivist, you need to get, um, I don't think you can get the gnomes, you know, kind of commander, I think you can get that in a collector box. I don't think you can get the gnomes in the draft. So you need either like a $20 kitty cat, or like a $20 archivist, right? Or, you need some land cycle. We got no archivist, no kitty cat, we got no land cycles, and we got five mythics. So, this that box one, um, essentially, the fact that we actually had... Five mythics is what saved that one. Otherwise, that and even then we didn't get any of it. We didn't get any of the. We got one. I mean, we got one silver dragon. I guess it's not that bad. I can't say we get any dragons, but that's the problem. So you have issues where you have to hit certain slots, and the product's so big, the odds of getting that particular slot, sunburst, or oh god, foil mythic puzzle box. That's pretty cool. Okay, so right out of the gate, pack one again, the mythic. That's see, but long term. I still feel like this is not, because this is not, this this product didn't have an inflated price. For some stupid reason, Wizards of the Coast felt the need to jack up the collector box price, but the set and draft boxes, well, actually, they, um, you know, they didn't raise the price on them. Why they jacked the price of only one of the three product lines up was a dick move and stupid, but the fact that the draft and set are like $90 boxes, that's really not bad, man. Like, I don't, you know, I, I really, I feel comfortable, like, even long term. And, um, well, we're later in the video now, as we, you know, I was going to talk about the end of this video. Because that was, you know, I had, I had to do a kind of a dirty deal with one of the distributors to get more Double Masters. Uh, double Masters Collectors, not Draft. And, well, that deal was taking, well, um, all their stale Boulders Gate product at regular price that they couldn't sell. So... I had to ask myself a simple question. Okay, obviously they don't believe in the product. They want it off their books. They want the money. A store stuck them with a lot of the product. And you got to ask yourself. That's essentially a bet on Commander Legends. It's a, it's a bet on Boulder's Gate for the long term. See, I think some of the big variables that people are not factoring in is Wizards has to reduce the print run on this product now because nobody's going to order it. If they reprinted draft and set, you know, three, four times like they did with the first Commander Legends, no one's going to buy it. Distributors aren't going to request it. The print run's not going to get ordered. And, well, because of that, there's going to be less supply. This product's going to come to an end way sooner than they had originally anticipated. So, because of that, I actually want to take a contrarian point of view. And I actually think... I, I think getting in large positions in the draft and set, particularly, um, don't, doesn't really have a lot of downside risk. The collector is different because they're so expensive. Now, again, I'm not saying the collector is a bad thing long term, but until the market stabilizes and stores stop fire selling every single Boulder's Gate item off their books because they think it's going to zero and they need cash to pay their bills, employees, and the next magic set, until that gets flushed through, we have no floor in the market. That's the problem right now. And as of right now, there is no floor for a lot of these products. Like the collector box is the highest risk because we can see short-term swings. God, Lee, what is going on with this box too? We're getting nothing. See, now this is a great example of the difference between box one and two. Box two so far on this video, my patron William is just getting annihilated. Oh, oh okay, well, we got the ship. That's not foil though. We got the matrix over here. The Matrix little worm guy, but it's not even foil. So we're two-thirds of the way through this box opening for box two. And this is terrible. This is terrible. Last eight packs. This is the worst draft box we've done so far. We have we have no kitty cat, 
no archivist, no land cycle, and we have two mythics, not even desirable top of the line mythics. And see, folks, that's my point. That's how, that's the volatility. Oh, God. That's the volatility of this product on a small scale. Like, box one was actually pretty good. And this shows that box two, double rare, triple rare pack, but the market says all three of those rares are worth zero. The market, as of right now, states if you don't get a $20 kitty cat or a $20 archivist, in other words, a blue card or a white card that's rare, manual, and foil and common. Every other rare in the set, of course, excluding the five land cycle and reflecting pool. So those six lands, those are the only thing of value. That's what the market says right now. Now, whether the market's going to... Ooh, packed weapon. There we go. Oh, okay. Finally, back in the game, folks. Packed weapon mythic, battle or foil mythic. So we just jumped from two to four mythics. That's kind of a that's kind of a big deal. And remember, these are ninety dollars boxes. We're not trying to get the three four hundred dollars to break even like a master product. We're not paying four hundred four hundred fifty for a master box, so we don't have a high tier to get to. We're trying to get to ninety dollars. Box one, I think we probably either got there or we're right at it. We're very close. Box two doesn't even look like we have a ch another puzzle box. Three puzzle box mythics in this video. Oh, whoa, whoa! We almost uh. Lost the camera here. Sorry, hang on, folks. Ooh, did you see that? We almost lost the camera. Ooh, okay. Boy, glad the camera didn't break. Um, it's just... What, what, this is a weird video. Sorry, well, this turned out to be really weird. Three of your mythics are the same. Hey, our first reflecting pool of the day. In the last... Uh, right at the end, we have one rare land? We had zero of the Battle Bond lands in two boxes. Heritage, Mentor... Dragon triple rare pack. Look at that. That's what I've never seen that before. I've never seen a magic set where you have a land cycle and you can crack two draft boxes and get zero out of five of the rare lands. That'd be like opening cons of Tarkir and getting zero fetch lands. That'd be like opening Modern Horizons 2 and getting zero fetch lands. It'd be like opening Gatecrash or Return to Ravnica, Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, and getting zero shock lands. I've never seen that. It's like they, it's so weird. Like usually track printing, you always have a couple hits of each in each land slot. And you don't have that. It's so weird, man. I don't know if that was intentional. Because usually track printing ensures a minimum. Even the worst box of cons of Tarkir would get like one fetch land. I've never even opened a cons box that had zero. The worst were one. Same thing with Ravnica boxes. So weird, man. Well, maybe. I don't know if I can say never. I'm sure there's always going to be that one box. But the odds are essentially next to nothing. The odds of this are pretty high. That's so crazy, man. That's all I got, folks. So, uh, I know Double Master's coming. It's expensive. Nobody cares because it's just getting bought out everywhere. Supply's low. Stores, it's a mess. The emotions are high. And, yeah, well, from a business standpoint, you know... Double Mass was the first magic product in a really long time that stores have the opportunity to get re kind of uh, refill their cash flow and make a profit. Because, you know, I'll be very blunt with everybody. It's been a very tough 12 to 18 months. And, um, you know, every product has come out and just eroded. It's been very tough, man. So have a great day, everybody. Beautiful world out there. Don't let the negativity and the anger get to you.